Deputy O'Sullivan. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad of the opportunity to raise this issue today. Um, and it's come about from engagement that some of us have had with people from Bahrain and with the, a human rights organisation. It's also topical today because the 14th of February is the 8th anniversary of the pro-democracy movement that took place in Bahrain, along with many other countries in the Middle East. And in the eight years since then, what we've seen has been the repression of the movement. So, you know, the question I'd have to ask, what is the fear around democracy and democratic movements? Because when we look at the world, it's those countries with free democratic elections and peaceful transfer of power after elections where we see stability and growth and we see health and education. What Bahrain has seen have been horrific repression of a democratic movement. Repression of the protesters, whether they're lawyers or doctors or students or teachers, human rights defenders and civil society. And the repression continues today in Bahrain with torture, police and military brutality and forced disappearance. Now I want to particularly look at the issue of the treatment of prisoners. There are inhumane conditions in Bahrain's jail prison and also in ISIS town women's prison and both of them they violate the UN standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners and as well as the inhumane physical conditions there are concerns over access to medication for prisoners family visits and degrading searches and above all of that the lack of accountability and I want to mention in particular three women prisoners Hajar Mansour, Medina Ali and Naja Yusuf they've all in need of medical care and their particular issue has been raised by both the Thornishta and by the UN and then, you know, there are questions around the relationship that our Royal College of Surgeons has with King Hamad University Hospital. And I would have to ask if our Royal College of Surgeons are living up to their ethical and to their moral standards. I've had correspondence from, um, from Minister Coveney on this, and I do think there is a need to go further. You know, the institutions in Bahrain are supposed to be looking after human rights, like the Ministry of the Interior, public prosecutions, etc. They're not independent and impartial, and that's why they need voices like Ireland. Deputy Sullivan, thank you. Deputy Niall Collins. Um, thanks, uh, Lasko and Corla, and thank the Minister for attending on this item. Um, just to say that I and my party are growing increasingly concerned about the repression of civil and political society in Bahrain. And as Deputy O'Sullivan has said, this is the eighth anniversary of the, um, the violent suppression by the government of the peaceful pro-democracy movement in Bahrain. Um, and in the Kingdom, and in the past eight years since the crackdown, the situation has worsened with numerous adverse um, developments over the past year alone. I think, Minister, you will know that it has been reported that the Bahraini government is engaged in a campaign to repress uh, political, civil and human rights and has taken steps to curb fundamental freedoms, including the right of freedom of expression, uh, free assembly and free press, amongst others. In 2017, authorities in Bahrain shut down the country's only independent newspaper and the leading secular left opposition political society. Uh, just this month, the Supreme Court of Bahrain sentenced Sheikh Ali Salam, General Secretary of the dissolved Al Wifaq political society, and senior Al Wifaq members Sheikh Hassan Sultan and Ali Aswad to life imprisonment. Following the sentencing, the spokesperson for the European Union External Action said, and I quote him, the final verdict marks a further step against dissenting voices and undermines the residual chances for an inclusive political dialogue in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The elections in Bahrain in 2018 were neither fair nor free, and human rights defenders and those who have expressed criticism of the government policy have been arrested tortured, interrogated and held in arbitrary detention. Given the current situation in Bahrain, it is quite ironic to say the least that Bahrain has a seat on the UN Human Rights Council and will do so until its term expires in 2021. The Human Rights Council is an intergovernmental body within the United Nations system responsible for strengthening the promotion and protection of human rights around the globe and for addressing situations of human rights violations and make recommendations to them. One wonders how the Council can effectively carry out its functions when one of its members is actively and deliberately suppressing human rights. And my question to you, Minister, is I'm asking the Government to show leadership on this issue. The 40th session of the Human Rights Council takes place from the 25th of February this month to the 22nd of March, and I would urge the Government to use this as an opportunity to express our grave concerns 
and to issue a statement condemning the actions of the Bahraini authorities ahead of the next session of the Human Rights Council. Thanks, Deputy Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Kahir and thank you to both deputies for raising this issue. Um, it is, of course, a matter of grave concern for this government that eight years on from the beginning of the 2011 pro-democracy protest, Bahrain uh, has not progressed in the way that we had hoped. In fact, it has become an increasingly restrictive society. Civic society space has contracted significantly. Fundamental freedoms, including the freedom of expression and association, are violated with worrying frequency. There are reports that the elections of November just last year took place in an environment that stifled dissent and recent reports, as the deputies have outlined, of torture and other inhumane and degrading treatment in relation to detained per persons are especially distressing, and we are repeatedly urging all states to safeguard the rights of prisoners and detainees, and our voice has been prominent, I think, in highlighting this particular thematic issue. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade is engaging with the Government of Bahrain, and this includes with their embassy in London, on a range of issues, including the ones I've outlined, giving, I think, our long-standing bilateral links, for example, on training of medical personnel, uh, on, in, between Ireland and Bahrain. Raising Ireland's concerns about human rights and freedom of expression in Bahrain is a prominent part of the dialogue that we have on an ongoing basis. The Government itself has given repeated commitments uh, that they are taking action to improve the human rights situation, to safeguard rights which are enshrined in their own constitution. However, I think the facts are very clear and the facts on the ground show that they have yet to live up to those commitments. And I would take this opportunity again on the floor to call on the Government to follow through on their obligations the Deputy has have raised uh, many issues of concerns, um, in particular uh, some specific people who have been detained, and, and I'm aware that there is a particular consciousness of Sheikh Al Salman, the Secretary General of what was once um, Bahrain's largest opposition political party, who was sentenced to life in prison in November of last year. This is something that we are monitoring and we are extremely concerned about, particularly in relation to this, but also other trials that have happened in recent times. Protection of fundamental human rights, including freedom of expression and opinion, is a cornerstone of our own foreign policy, and the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade receives regular reports from the NGOs on the situation with regards to these in Bahrain. As a small country, Ireland amplifies its voice on human rights issues through multilateral engagement and through measured recommendations offered as part of constructive dialogue. We continually advocate in favour of free and fair democratic process and for the right of civil society actors and human rights defenders to operate in a safe environment, but also without fear of re reciprocal for speaking out or reprisal for speaking out. Ireland also urges all states to safeguard the human rights of prisoners and detainees is, and committed to the prevention and eradication of torture and other forms of cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. Uh, Deputy Collins raised the issue of the UN uh, HRC. Notably, Ireland has always used uh, the UN Human Rights Council as a means of keeping human rights issues in Bahrain under examination. We've raised Bahrain in the past eight statements on human rights situations that require the Council's attention and we will be, I can assure the deputies, raising it again in the upcoming meeting. We have expressed concern about the restrictions on civil society space and on the treatment of human rights defenders in Bahrain and called on Bahrain to respect freedom of opinion and expression and to the right to a fair trial. At the Human Rights Council in June last year, the statement by the European Union also highlighted the deterioration of the human rights situation in Bahrain, with particular reference to the shrieking of political space. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade constantly monitors developments in relation to human rights in Bahrain and will continue to call on the government to deliver on its stated commitment to making progress in all of these areas in human rights. We have positive bilateral relations, I think it's important to say, with Bahrain, which is home to some 800 Irish citizens, but this does not prevent us from raising the concerns through the appropriate channels, whether it's with directly uh, Bahraini officials or at an EU level, at an international level, with our colleagues throughout the European Union and, of course, at the UN. HRC. Thank you. Minister, thank you. Uh, Deputy O'Sullivan. Thank you very much, Minister. Um, there has been documented police brutality, and yet no senior officials in Bahrain security forces have been held accountable for allegations of torture, excessive force, or extrajudicial killings to date. Peaceful protests are treated with brutality, with arbitrary arrests, confessions that have been co coerced, and then, very alarmingly, the resumption of the death penalty. What we're seeing is the suppression of civil society organisations and no independent media outlet. Now, there is a hereditary 
hereditary monarchy of dynasty, but that dynasty is excluding all but the minority Sunni, and it is discriminating against the other groups within Bahrain. You mentioned going to the appropriate channels, so going back to you know, um, Deputy Collins' question, will it be raised, can Ireland raise it at the next Human Rights Council in Geneva? Because it does appear that the Bahraini authorities will only act when there is international scrutiny and international pressure. So we hope you will take that opportunity at the Council. Thanks, Deputy. Deputy Niall Collins. Um, thanks, uh, Minister, for your reply and indeed for your interest. Just to recap, what we see in Bahrain is a lack of um, proper independent oversight bodies. We see gerrymandering in terms of elections uh, and the electoral process, the electoral areas. We have evidence of um, whitewashing of abuses. There's a, an attempt to rewrite history in terms of what happened to people and a revisionism and to cloud it all out. Um, we see persistent uh, use of capital punishment. And we see, as we've said, a crackdown on the freedom of, of expression um, and that also on the online platforms. And we've also seen uh, and heard of reports of torture and indeed denaturalisation, making people stateless as a result of people speaking up and uh, speaking up and calling out the abuses. So what I would in particular like to see our government um, do and say when they make uh, the next uh, approach in relation to this is to ensure that the um, moratorium on the death penalty is reinstated, to reform um, the accountability and the oversight mechanisms. I want you to call for these things, uh, to release all political prisoners and to reinstate the dissolved uh, political parties because without other political actors on the stage we know that you won't have uh, any sort of fledgling or proper democracy and also to allow for the uh, freedom of expression and assembly. So if the government can take on, those, take on board these uh, core um, reasonable uh, requests, I think we'll be progressing this situation in, a, in some small fashion. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Collins. Uh, Minister McEntee. Again, just to thank both deputies for raising what is an extremely important issue and to restate, I suppose, our position, the past eight statements that we've made, um, which requires the Council's attention in terms of the UN Human Rights Council, uh, we have raised the issue of Bahrain and we will be sure to raise it again, um, again to, to, to reassure both deputies that the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade will continue to raise our voice about the human rights situation, both multilaterally, but also through the various different organisations. We are co-sponsored, uh, or we co-sponsored the Human Rights Council resolutions calling on states to investigate alleged human rights violations. This is abuse suffered by detainees, in particular those where there is death, uh, torture, cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment, and also to ensure that there is proper investigation uh, which provides effective remedies to victims, as, as Deputy Collins has raised. We are also co-sponsors of Human Rights Council and General Assembly resolutions, which concerns human rights and the administration of justice. Uh, I am particularly worried, and I, and I think the Department is gravely concerned, that after seven years of a moratorium on the death penalty, the Bahraini government has again begun executing prisoners. Um, and if I could take this opportunity just to reaffirm our unequivocal opposition to capital punishment in all circumstances, in all cases, the abolition of the death penalty is an internal and international priority for Ireland. Our own officials regularly visit um, and convey our stance at various levels, as I've said, whether it's uh, with the various different organisations, whether it's with the, the, the um, bodies on the ground or whether it's with our member state colleagues, uh, and we will continue to do so. We are highlighting our grave concern um, over the ending of the de facto moratorium on the death penalty and reaffirming our unequivocal opposition to capital punishment in all circumstances. Thank you. Thanks to Deputy O'Connor.